to ski it well, and I did. So, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's begin. You feel good? Feel good. Wicked. Yeah. We're going to start with the most difficult question. My name is Michaela Schifrin, and I am an alpine ski racer. And that's, yeah, that's it. I feel like my love for skiing, it's... It's pretty indescribable, but it, the best the best way I can describe it is like just pure connection. I feel, I, I feel connected with myself when I'm skiing. And maybe it's just, it's sort of a form of expression. I feel like I can explore creativity when I race, when I train, when I ski. I can, I feel like it's a, it's a way to channel energy that I have, whether it's good energy or even sometimes angry energy. It, it shows just just like in the way that you can feel like a certain energy from musicians through different albums that they create. It's like, you know, they were going through maybe a tough time at that period and it comes out through their lyrics or whatever it is. I feel like I can express myself better and ski racing is basically is my tool of expression. It's helped me grow into somewhat of a more confident person kind of start to feel more comfortable in my own skin. There's so much to be passionate about actually when when I think of skiing and how lucky I feel to have, I don't know, come into this sport when I was three years old and kind of never look back. But in order to be truly competitive at something for a sustainable amount of time, you have to be passionate about it. You have to love it. And not just loving the exciting parts of it, but actually loving the side of it that requires work and discipline and it's monotonous and it, it takes time, it takes effort, and you have to find things about that that you love. Otherwise, you might be competitive for a day, but you're not gonna be competitive for a lifetime. We don't need to say breaking records. The reason I care about it so much is, like I, I never cared about that before. Um, and anytime anyone else would break a record, I would just be like, yeah, record breaker. Like, that's amazing. That's so cool. What an inspiring, motivational thing to say. But once I was in that position, all I could think about are all the athletes who've come before me, you know, Ingemar Stenmark, Lindsay, who was in the position to do that. She was so close. I, th I think about these athletes and I think, how terrible it must feel to think something that you achieved in your career was broken. And maybe that's not the way that they see it, but if it's, if it's one small way we can shift the terminology, and if that makes a difference in their lives, so they feel just as proud of what they accomplished in their own legacies as they did before, before I reset it, before any of that happened, um, that's important to me. It's just trying to think about what, what the emotion and the feelings go. And it, it might be silly, it might be just a small term, but that's, 
I think it's important to me because I also feel like records don't break. 86 still exists from Ingmar. It's just that there's, you know, there's a higher number now, but that doesn't take away anything he did. So I, I feel like the term broken, it means something was lost. It was, I don't know, it, and it, it isn't lost. Those records are never lost. They just, they just are redefined a little bit. The pressure that I felt through my career has actually changed. I'd say it's gone in phases. In, in the beginning, it was sort of um, kind of like a clock was t ticking just to prove myself that, that I deserved and could earn the spot that I had on, on my team to, to be able to race in World Cup races. Every single race, I felt like I had to earn my spot to be there. And you'd only do that res with results. Once I started getting results, I started feeling outside expectations building. And then the pressure shifted from earning my spot to be there to um, earning basically the continuation of people's expectations. And as expectations build, there was a period of time where I felt like my expectations always exceeded everyone else's. And then there was a beginning of the season, I don't remember, I don't know, I think it was like 2016 maybe? Yeah, I think the start of that season, I won the first race, first slalom race of the season by, I think it was point, like point six seven, six tenths of a second, which in ski racing, it's a, that's a big margin, but it's, tiny. I mean, people rate, win races by one hundredth of a second. So it's just, we're dealing with like tighter margins in the sport. But I won this race by six, almost seven tenths of a second. And the first thing that I was asked, and actually the thing I was asked the most after that race was if I felt like I was losing my skiing, my, my touch, or if everybody else was catching up because I didn't win the race, by as much. My, my average for the previous season, I think, was winning races by two seconds, which was, it just, one of those things is like, you don't, you don't know how to explain it, but it, it shouldn't happen. It's just, I don't know, like <laughs> fast skis, <laughs> you know, but people got so used to it. The expectations climbed so high that when I then won a race by seven tenths of a second, which is also a monumental margin, People were like, what did you do wrong? And that was, that was a, that was a life altering moment for me. And it started a, a season or two seasons of pretty severe performance anxiety that if I, not only did I have to win races, but I had to win races by at least over a second for people to not basically turn it into a negative thing. And that was a period of time where I listened a lot and and reacted a lot to what everyone else said and kind of a fear of disappointing other people, even people I didn't even know, even the media. And since then, you know, I, I continued to be successful, but I had some ups and downs. And I've learned that if I do an interview after a race, like in that same exact situation, where someone says, you know, what did you do wrong in this race? I can, I don't even have to get defensive about it. I used to, but I don't have to get defensive about it. I could even just say something as simple as like showing my excitement and say, honestly, I, that was really great skiing. I'm so excited. That's the quote they get. That's all you give them. And they, it's like people are forced to change their own mindset and their own mentality because of how you honestly feel about the race. And I've learned that that makes such a big difference. And people don't say to me anymore, like, oh, are you bummed you didn't win by two seconds? They're like, what, uh, what are you thinking, you know? And sometimes I'm disappointed and I'll say that too. But I, I learned so much more about controlling the narrative. And a lot of that was probably after my dad passed away when life kind of gets jolted into perspective on that level it almost feels silly to go back and think, oh, I struggle with performance anxiety about winning a ski race. Like, not, I don't, I don't really care that much anymore. And yeah, I mean, the beginning of this season, somebody asked about a race that I, I didn't win, I was fifth, and 
you know, they asked if I was disappointed, and I said, honestly, no. I've done everything I want in the sport. I've done, ev accomplished everything I could have ever possibly dreamed of and more. And I don't care if I don't win another race. And that's probably the one thing that's going to allow me to, to win more races. Because it's not that I don't care about skiing. I just, I'm not in it for resetting that record. And I like the feeling of the skiing I do that earns the win, not the win itself. Because the win, it lasts for a split second. It's, I don't know, you you're thrown into the onslaught of media and mix zone and it's chaotic and you don't actually get to enjoy winning. You just, you enjoy the, the moments right before it happens. And then in the split second it happens, then it's over. And then you don't, there's nothing like that. It, that's it. It's, it's over. It's, it's not like, you know, it, the only thing that makes it beautiful is what you get to share with people you love and the people you work with and your family and, that's what makes it special. The winning itself is baseless. It's it's nothing. Deep. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Um, we're gonna have a very long video after this. I'm sorry. No, it's sick. It is, it is, you can't cut anything. How many out. editors you got? <laughs> no, no, no. That's easy. It's gonna be easy.